This is a quick video about how to solve conservation of momentum problems for elliptical orbits. So in this particular case, it says an asteroid of mass M follows elliptical path. When the asteroid is at a distance R1 from the center of the ellipse, its velocity is V1. Uh, what, it's, what is its velocity V2 when it arrives at a distance R2 from the center of the ellipse in terms of R1, V1, and R2? So we'll start off using our angular momentum method by drawing a labeled picture. So our picture's already there. Determine the positive and negative directions. Let's say counterclockwise is positive. The bar graph. So um, we find that as long as we're staying on the same elliptical orbit, that angular momentum will be conserved for this asteroid. So the angular momentum when it's at location 1 is going to be the same as the angular momentum when it gets to location 2. Um, step 4 is writing a momentum conservation statement. So we'll say angular momentum is conserved because the system is closed and there are no external torques. Um, this is not a collision. So we're not going to talk about whether it's inelastic or elastic. Number six, we're going to write our general equation that the angular momentum L1 is equal to the angular momentum L2. Then step seven, we're going to write the specific equation and plug in the specific inertias I and angular velocity. So um, it's I1 omega 1 equals I2 omega 2. So we're going to treat this asteroid because um, it is, well, we're going to treat it like a point particle. So the equation for a point particle for I, the rotational inertia, is m um, r1 squared. Okay. Um, omega, we're going to change that from um, angular velocity to linear velocity by using this bridge equation. So remember, this is our bridge equation. We're solving it for omega. Then we're plugging it into this equation at that point and that point, and we should be getting V over R in both of these um, sections right here. Okay, so um, we do some math. Notice there's an M on both sides. The mass is not going to change, so that cancels out. Let's look at the R. So this um, this is R1 squared divided by R1, so we'll just end up with R1 on the left side. Over here, we got R2 squared divided by R2, so we'll just end up with R2. So it turns out that in these problems that um, the equation becomes relatively simple. R1, V1 equals R2, V2. Uh, we, if we solve this for V2, we get R1, V1 divided by R2. And that's it.